Hey guys, so I've got a question for you. When it comes to uh, playing these simulations, how important is imagination? All right, this is something I've been thinking about the other day. I, I went and I started reading again about you know, radio recreations of baseball games. I don't know if you've heard about these, actually, you know, because this is such a an old thing that it's it's from a generation before sort of the oldest generation we have around now. I mean, back in, uh, you know, in some minor league towns back in like the 30s and 40s, and I think even up to parts of the 50s, um, uh, you had uh, games that were relayed over the radio via recreation. You know how it was, right? They would bring, uh, they would have the uh, play-by-play over the wire, and it would say, like, I don't know, Jones up to bat, ball, strike, ball. And the role of the person who was the announcer was to take this information and turn it into something that uh, was interesting to the listener, right? Uh, tell a story, give it a storyline, something like that, right? How, I mean, how different, first of all, that is from what we're used to, right? Where nowadays, I mean, most announcers that you watch on, uh, especially national broadcasters, which are horrible, but announcers you'll see on TV will barely even talk about what's happening on the field, right? It's completely different from the way that it once was, right? A lot of the imagination, a lot of the description is gone from the game. But it's also interesting in the context of our replays, right? Um, so when I do a game here on camera, it's a little bit different, right? I've got to talk about what's happening. I probably spend too much time talking about like the mechanics of what's happening or what I think or, or giving my criticism of, you know, the game engine or, or doing something like that, you know, and that kind of takes away from the whole, like, let's describe this uh, action in front of us. Let's talk about the scene that we're seeing. And, and that's sort of like art that uh, was once part of the game. Uh, but uh, there is, I think, a time and place um, uh, for both. And the nice thing about having a game in which all you have is a block of text to draw from, or even less, something that's an abstraction, you know, uh, roll of the dice and uh, uh, consulting the charts and stuff like that. The nice thing about that is that what's actually happening on the field is really happening up here in your head. That's the cool thing about it, right? You're thinking a lot about, like, you know, what what is actually happening in this game, what is um, actually, you know, going on, um, uh, and uh, how do I interpret this event, right? Is there some sort of mechanism, for example, that will differentiate between, like, a routine play, like a shortstop, and a diving stop, and a great throw that barely nips the uh, batter, and, uh, and so on and so forth, right? That's the part that's cool, because you can start to see it there in your mind's eye, and you can kind of visualize what's going on, and you don't have necessarily the visual in front of you to say this is this and that is that. Now, contrast that to a game like OOTP. And here, I'll give you an example right here. So we're gonna switch on over here again to OOTP. This is from today's game. We'll turn the sound on. There is the sound. And so if we go take a look just at this highlight, and uh, if you watch this morning's video, you've seen this before, right? So there's Strawberry's first at bat earlier on. And the fans go wild, and Strawberry hits the home run to tie it up, right? So, I mean, when we look at that highlight, right, we see him swing, we see him hit the ball right over here, we see that it's a home run, right, and we kind of have to imagine some things, right, like the fielders are just sort of standing there looking at the outfield, that's kind of weird, right, there, it's, it's not perfect, right, the animation is not perfect, um, I don't think that the uh, sound of the crowd is necessarily perfect either, right, you look into the uh, dugout and you're like, well, this is the wrong uniform, and all the fans look exactly the same, and uh, they're wearing kind of strange colors and all this other stuff, but like, whatever. You know, I think for the most part, uh, we'll turn this off now, I think for the most part, you kind of uh, get what I'm saying, right? You know, like a lot of, um, despite the fact that you still have to sort of use your imagination, a lot of uh, the essence of what happened there is really presented for you, right? You can see where the home run was hit. You can see that it was a home run. You could see right from uh, the swing of the bat that it was going to be out of there, right? You could see the outfielder giving up on the ball, right? You can hear the sound. You can hear the sound of the crowd going wild, right? And that adds a certain um, a dimension to the game when you play it, right? It's kind of cool to hear that. It's kind of cool to see that. But at the same time, I keep getting this feeling that it sort of takes something away from it as well, right? Because, um, you know, we're we're not uh, seeing in our mind's eye what it looks like for Daryl Strawberry to hit that home run, right? We don't necessarily have the ability to, I mean, unless you know every single player that ever played, to see exactly what the pitcher was like and exactly what his uh, uh, windup was like or anything like that. But, you know, there is definitely something to be said for um, being able to... Uh, uh, 
uh, imagine this and, uh, you know, being able to imagine it to a certain extent and kind of tie it in with video that you've seen or with memories that you have and stuff like that, right? And so that's kind of my question. I, I don't know what you guys think about this and, like, how imagination kind of intersects with these games. I think that it's really important. I really do think that that old uh, practice of uh, creating recreations of baseball games, which has long been abandoned. Nobody does it today except for foolish people like me, um, and I'm not particularly good at it, right? I do think that that old practice is something that we probably should think about again, and we especially should think about the role that imagination plays in that, right? I mean, you know, baseball is very much, you know, a sport that you can watch and you can enjoy, but in so many ways, it's a sport for the imagination and a sport for the brain, right? And it's not the only sport that's like that either. There's a lot of that that happens with football as well. There's a lot of that that happens with basketball. And we talk, everybody talks about, you know, well, how would this player do against that player from different eras and stuff like that, right? And, and that's kind of the fun of it, right? Getting deep into it and imagining things and trying to come up with scenarios that never happened in real life. That's pretty cool. That's the sort of stuff I get a kick out of. Anyway, there you go. Just love to know what you guys think about uh, that intersection between replay and accuracy and imagination. What do you think about that? Talk to you later. Bye.